Okay, as we're working on our perspective drawing, um, I just wanted to remind you of a few things. As you get started into it, um, remember you can turn your grid on with uh, shortcuts uh, Shift Command I, and you get the grid that pops back up. Remember that the grid is just a suggestion. It's just to kind of let you know that you can go this way on the orange. You can go this way with the blue. You can go underneath on the with the uh, with the green, and it's all controlled by this little widget up here. Click here for the base. Click here for the left. Click here for the right. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, and you can adjust that grid if you want to. You can uh, use the perspective grid tool, like we've uh, talked about before. And when you click on it and then click on your grid, you've got little handles and things that will help you adjust the height of the grid, but you can also raise the grid if you need that help, if you need that assistance. Remember, you don't really need it, and there are kind of some limitations to it. If you if you go if you watch this one going back, it stops after a certain amount of time. That doesn't mean you can't go further. You can always go further with your grid. Okay, this is a drawing that I started on a few days ago in class. I'll turn the grid off, shift command I. To remind you that once you have got some basic shapes in here, you can click on the uh, objects. I'm not seeing it here. Oh yeah, perspective grid tool. You can click on the objects even after it's selected to um, rescale it. You can see these uh, objects that I can reselect here and reposition. And even that that right there was just done with the blob tool with the blob brush. And yet it's completely rescalable too, so long as I use the right tool, the perspective selection tool. Okay? And once you've got it, you can see here I'm not using the grid at all. I can select objects without the grid and move them and rescale them and do other things with them. This is a coffee cup from our first folder that I just borrowed and put in here. Now as far as selecting, you remember when you're working in Illustrator, if you go to your outline view, you can select, a lot of times you can select things easier than you can in the preview. For instance, trying to select this coffee cup, I would have to use all these shift selections here to get get this, unless it's grouped. If it's grouped, it's no problem. But if it's if it's something you brought in it's not grouped and you want to select it, try using the outline try using the outline uh, view because then it makes selecting so much easier. Okay? Back into preview and you can see I can Move this down. This stays in perspective. I can scale it and do other things to it. Okay, so keep in mind that outline view still works even as you're working here in perspective. It's just Command Y and it makes selecting so much easier. Okay, all right. All right. Shift Command I to turn on the grid, Command Y to go in and out of outline view. I also wanted to mention this, and I'm a little bit ahead uh, on on my uh, 
on my drawing than on my movies. But what I've done here is, if I can zoom in, uh, drawing these shapes, drawing these shapes is a matter of going kind of off the artboard. And you can see where that happened with the wall here. And it went, it, it arced, it, it uh, went way up like this and way over to here. Well, to cut off those little parts that go past the artboard, I just used, uh, sorry about that, my mouse is jumpy. Um, you can use your selection tools and shift and select out of perspective. And for instance, with a rectangle here, I can select so that I select, so I draw a new rectangle on top of that and then use my divide objects below. Object path, divide objects below. And what that does is give you the option then of eliminating some of these items up here that you don't need. If you select it correctly, you got to use the right selection tool. But see how you can trim off your the outside of your artboard. Okay, I had a great big bunch of background that was that I got rid of down here and over here and off the top, and you can do that too. Now, once you've done that, once you've trimmed it, the uh, perspective selection tool no longer works on it. If I try to select that now, it's 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 not scalable as it was before. The things that are entirely still in, in uh, perspective have this heavy box around it. Things that have been trimmed off, like the background here, you'll see they select more like they did when they were when you were using the regular selection tool. Okay, but you can do the whole rooms, you can do you can make the whole environment. And that's what I'd like to see here is more than just objects drawn in perspective. You know, try to create an environment, try to try to do a, an interior or an exterior or an, a, an object. We saw some people that did cher, uh, cereal boxes, stuff like that. And you can just continue to draw uh, so long as you pick the right side, the correct side of your widget. Okay, now I'm going to zoom in on this part and you can see all these are little tiny rectangles done in the perspective environment. That's on the right side of the widget, and this is on the left. On the I'm sorry, on the right side, and this is on the left. This is on the green, the bottom. Okay, and that once you've drawn stuff again, once you've drawn stuff and you select it using the selection tool, it'll automatically update here in on your widget. Depending on the object that you've got selected, it'll select it correctly for you. Okay, there I'm on the right, on the left. Here I'm on the right, and it's absolutely okay to have some pieces of it that aren't even in perspective. If I click out, there's a little circle right here, a little ellipse that I added just because I needed this little gap to fill, and that's just done with the regular ellipse tool, not even working in perspective anymore. Okay. To get this type up here, that's blob brush again. You can see that if I select, if I go out of the uh, perspective, once I select an object that's already been drawn, it stays in perspective even though my grid's not showing. Okay, that's a big help, I think, is that you don't have to keep that grid up all the time because it's kind of confusing, isn't it? When you have that grid up, you can't see certain things. Okay. Just remember to use the right selection tool. If you keep going up here and trying to use the regular selection tool, it pops you right out of perspective. You can no longer draw in perspective when you've got that selected. Okay, so use the right selection tool, and you can just keep on selecting stuff. It's absolutely okay to draw part of it in regular Illustrator and part of it in perspective. Okay. Okay, I'm going to keep working on this. I'm uh, trying to kind of draw the front of the classroom here. Um, I've got my uh, coffee cup as my as the assignment on the smart board. And I'm just going to try to keep kind of building this interface.